Okie dokie, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Duty's Daggers. We got a pretty fun topic today. It's not a typical knife review or anything like that, but we're talking about something specific here. But before we get into it, if you're not subscribed and you're watching, uh, just trust me, you're going to like the video, so you go ahead and subscribe right now. Um, also follow me on, Duty, on uh, Instagram, Duty's underscore Daggers. So, I wanted to talk about fidgety knives. Now, um... For some reason, I don't I don't particularly particularly like the word fidgety. For some reason, it just kind of bugs me. It's like a pet peeve kind of thing. I'm not really sure the reasoning behind that. Um, so instead of that word, we could say you know knives that are satisfying to use, for example. Um, and I wanted to talk about that question. What what makes a knife satisfying to use or fidgety? And I thought about it a little bit, not too much. We're going to kind of be figuring this out together here. Um, but I couldn't come up with a uh, definitive answer. Um, there are a ton of elements to this. And I, I just don't know. Um, but we can talk about some elements that make knives fun to play with. Um, now, you're going to have um, some folks saying, you know, n you know, knives are tools. You know, they don't need to be played with. And... You know, those people just don't like to have fun in life, I guess. Uh, because you can have the best of both worlds. You can have a knife that is fun to mess around with and is also a really good tool. What's wrong with that? Nothing. In fact, that's kind of <clears throat> the ultimate knife, right? If you can have a knife that's fun to play with and is also a great work knife or you know whatever you use your knives for, it's great at that thing. And th there, those are kinds of knives are out there, believe me. There's tons of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. So first, let's talk about some elements that make a knife fun to play with, fun to fidget with. Um, I guess a classic example would be the reverse flick. Um, that's fun to do. It's just, it's fun to do. <laughs> it was especially fun to do when I first learned how to do it. When I first got my very uh, first spider coat with a tenacious and um, I tried the reverse flick and once I got it down, it was like, oh, that's pretty neat. I really like that. Uh, that's how I want to open all my knives now, you know? And um, it was almost like the first hit of, uh, of a drug, you know? After that moment, I was chasing that high and I still am chasing that high because it was never quite as fun as it was the first time. You know, it's now, now it's second nature. That's just how I open this knife and um, other knives with, with the, you know, that you can reverse flick. So it's not the same, but it's still fun. I still like doing it. And that uh, reverse flick, especially compared with, uh, not compared, um, paired with the compression lock really makes a very fidgety knife. Um, and take it one step further and add this um, compression lock made easy, this little tab here made by OCD for EDC. Um, those three elements, the reverse flicking hole, the compression lock, and the CME make the Spyderco PM2 and other Spydercos with compression locks a very fun knife to operate. And a very, you know, it's not just fun. Uh, there's utilitarian purposes for that too. You can get the knife out of your pocket, deploy it quickly, do your cutting task, and put it away very fast and one-handed. So that's an example of the best of both worlds, right? Um, but just the fact that you can reverse flick it with the, with the uh, CME, I can kind of do it with the side of my finger like this. So I don't even need to move my finger into this area. I just kind of do that. It's just awesome, man. It's very fun. This is my primary work knife. Um, I love this thing. It's a great work knife. So we have reverse flicks, we have the compression lock. Um, how about detents? I think detents play a pretty big role in making a knife pleasurable to use. Um, the Sharp by Design Apex is a great example of that because it has a different kind of detent inside here um, that creates a very crisp breakaway. Now, um, just a very, very, very brief overview on what a detent is. Um, there's a little ball. Well, no, I can't use that as an example. There's a little bar, a ball, that is embedded into this lock bar. And it is sitting inside of a little hole that's in the tang of the blade. Now when you apply pressure to either the thumb stud, the front flipper, the flipper tab, whatever you're using to open the knife, 
when you apply pressure, that blade, that um, that ball pops out of its hole, and that's what gives you that resistance, that initial resistance. You you pop the ball out, and the knife flies open. So um, there's different tolerances and ways that the ball that ball fits into that hole, and if it's done well with the uh, added element of the pressure from the lock bar it can either be a very crisp breakaway you know the ball can, can crisply break out of its hole or it can mushily <laughs> do it like on this knife um, you can see when I close it there's no real click it's mushy now on the apex here it is very crisp I don't know it's probably not going to come across very well on camera um, it's more of a feel kind of thing but trust me, um, that breakaway is just so nice. You can kind of see it. I'll put it next to the microphone for the breakaway. Oh, my dog's messing around in the background. Anyways, um, yeah, so you have a crisp detent. That can be very satisfying and fun to have on, you know, uh, as part of your knife. Then we have button locks. Button locks are really fun. Super duper fun. Um, you know, I think part of the reason is it's just a button. It's so easy to do. Um, you know, we push buttons all day, every day. We have buttons on our phones, on our microwaves, or TV remotes, on our, our trucks, our cars, everywhere. And to have it on a knife is pretty neat. To close the knife, you push the button. It's as simple as that. And um, it's fun to mess around with just because, you know, you have a free swinging blade. Um, it just falls shut very nicely. Um, it's just fun. Button locks are fun. And I guess that's another element is the free swinging blades. Um, if you have a free swinging blade, it makes the knife usually always better. Always better to have this kind of nice free swinging blade when the lock isn't engaged, whatever that lock is. So what else? Um, I think OTFs can be kind of fidgety um, in a way. You know, it's a different kind of thing. But, you know, you have a, a kind of a clicky, slidey button here that you slide up and slide down and a blade pops out. That's just neat, right? What else? There's different locking mechanisms like the axis lock um, can be fidgety because it's one-handed. Pull down these little tabs, the blade freely swings shut. I think the one-handed use uh, kind of is a, a big element here to you know, having a fidgety knife. Um, usually, if you can operate it one-handed very easily, it's fun, right? Um, it's just fun. I mean, you can operate liner locks one-handed too, um, but it's not as smooth. You know, it's a little less. It's more clunky. You got to push aside the lock bar. You got to get your thumb out of the way, grab it differently, shake it shut. You know what I mean? Um, here's an example of a very nice detent um, the, on the Finch Holiday. Here, this knife is very fidgety. Um, it's got a really nice sound too, and that's another part of a, a satisfying knife is the sound, the acoustics. This thing has a very kind of tinny, crisp sound to it. Check this out. Oof. I'll do it right next to the microphone, but this is one of my favorite detent clicks. It is very, very nice. Very nice. Um, and then, I don't know, this might be the master of all fidget knives. Um, I don't know. Uh, it just it has so many elements. We have multiple means of deployment, <coughs> which is another element of um, a fidget knife is having multiple means of deployment, right? I mean, you have you can pick up the knife and decide how you want to open it. You can use the thumb stud. You can use the flipper tab. It's fun. You switch around. You know, bam, 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 reverse flick. Um, but the 8020.5 has a lot of means of deployment and it has a very, very cool lock on it. Um, easy one-handed use. You have thumb studs. You have the slot for the reverse flick. You can reverse flick off the thumb stud too if you want. Um, you can just pull down the lock and swing it out. And this knife probably has the best uh, sounds of any knife that I've tried. Um, it's just metallic clicky clacky noises, which I'm a huge fan of, and I think a lot of you are. So it has a lot of the elements that we're talking about here, um, all in one knife, which is amazing. Let me let my dog out real quick. 
So I think that kind of covers it pretty well. What what makes a, a knife fidgety? Oh, I forgot to mention front flippers. <clears throat> I think front flippers are, are fidgety because it's just kind of a, a weird way to open your knife up, right? Uh, they're becoming a lot more popular these days, but they weren't always. And I know that first time I saw somebody open up a front flipper, um, I was like, whoa, how do you do that? It was almost like magic because you didn't see, you can't really see where the blade's coming from. And then all of a sudden it's just out. Um, so if, yeah, front flippers can be fidgety. I think that kind of covers it. Um, let me know if I forgot any any like major fidget elements um, in knives. Um, let me just say again though, um, just because a knife is fidgety does not mean that it's um, less tough or less useful. I mean the shark lock is a very, very strong lockup. Um, so that's just another reason why this thing might be the, the, uh, the greatest of all time as far as um, fidget elements mixed with um, just really good knife elements. Um, and now I should mention, um, and I've been thinking more about this recently, is, um, you know, I love to fidget with my knives. Um, I get home from work, you know, I use my knives at work, then I come home, and um, I relax, and I usually have a knife in my hand, and I open and close it a bunch. Um, that is not the best thing to do for your stop pins. Um, you know, the stop pin is this this pin here that when the blade flies open, um, keeps it from overextending back this way. Um, so you have a, a large uh, you know, blade, a large metal blade, slamming into a smaller metal piece. And over time, that is going to create wear. Now, um, it happens pretty darn slowly but it is happening so you know really the more you fidget with your knives um, you're really cutting down on the lifespan of the knife by by doing it now I don't really know how long it would actually take because it's never happened to me and I fidget with my knives a lot and I have for for quite a while so I don't know how big an issue it is actually but if you do think about it you know it is it is a thing. Um, it, there's no way that it's not creating any wear on the stop pin. Now, if you had enough wear um, to where, you know, you actually, you know, it, it could get to a point where you had some blade play in the in the um, in the locked out position because you 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 know there's a gap in there. Um, again, I don't, I just don't know. I don't know how long that would take for to to happen. I don't know. Um, I guess moral of the story is it's something to be aware of. But honestly, it is not going to stop me from uh, sitting on my couch and, and flicking open my knives because it's very fun. I like to do it. And they're my knives. I can ruin them if I want to. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah, just thought I'd mention that. Um, it is something to think about. But, uh, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Well, um, yeah, that'll about do it. Um, I'm losing the light here, so I'm going to have to end it. Uh, this time change is really messing up my my filming uh, kind of setup schedule because I film after I get off work and I get home around four o'clock and it gets dark right around four four fifteen four thirty now it starts you know it's twilight it's twilight right now um, and I re I just really hate kind of the um, the fake light I, I just I love the natural light I think it makes things look so much better. Um, unless I had a nice light setup, I don't know. I, I just don't know anything about it. Um, so I'm. I mean, it's going to progressively get slowly better. It's going to stay light later and later. So at least for uh, a couple weeks here, I'm just going to have to rush home, you know, <laughs> and start filming right away. But that's fine. It's worth it to have a nice looking, you know, lighting here. So um, yeah, that'll about do it. Thanks for watching. Um, I have some really cool stuff coming in the mail to me. Some is coming uh, tomorrow and some will be coming later, uh, possibly weekend or next Monday. Uh, stuff I'm very excited about. Very excited about. So stay tuned. You'll see an unboxing or something like that. And um, thanks for watching. I do have a Patreon if you feel like checking it out. It's linked below. And um, use my links below. I have a couple discount codes um, for Blue Creek Knives and White, uh, White Mountain Knives. So, um, yeah, use those codes. It helps us both out. And, um, yeah, love you guys. Thanks for watching. Adios.